we're going to go through some uh, guidelines. Again, I said this isn't a, a comprehensive uh, study on what to do and not to do, but just an overview of some guidelines. Um, our intent here is to kind of show you um, all that Connor considers uh, or takes into consideration when looking at one of your parts. But for example, if you uh, have some slots in your part that you need, if you put your slots at least two times the stock thickness away from the edge of the part, when the length of your slot is less than 10 times thickness, all you need is two times the material thickness here minimum. It can be more, but you need that as a minimum. When the length of your slot is greater than 10 times, then you want to keep your wall thickness about four times the material thickness away from the edge. And what that does, it allows you to design a cost-effective stamping. If you needed this slot to be right over here, it can be done, but it's a costlier tool, a higher maintenance part. Um, but again, it can't be done. And the intent here is just to give you an overview of uh, guidelines for uh, designing metal stamping. Another example for, uh, of a guideline for designing the metal stamping. If you're putting a slot and you're also bending the part, you want to keep the, uh, the slot about four times thickness away from the edge plus the radius. Okay? So for example, if your material was 100 thousandths thick and your radius was 100 thousandths, then you would want to keep this edge 500 thousandths away from this edge. 100 thousandths of your radius, and we said your material thickness was 100 thousandths, which is four times. So the distance, the D would equal to 500. So depending on your stock thickness, that D dimension varies based on the thickness of your material and the size of your radius. One of the other features that a lot of the parts have is called a lance. And usually these lances are used as catchers or sometimes as stops. And um, whenever you have a lance, it's actually more difficult to lance a part than it is to cut it because you don't, you're not really finishing the process. Uh, when you're cutting or you're blanking, you're blanking the, the part through. When you're lancing, you're shearing. And so it's actually more difficult to lance than it is to pierce. And one of the things that typically happens when you lance is uh, after you've lanced, the lance wants to stick because it gets stuck into the, the shape that you uh, cut it. So one of the things that you can do to uh, help that is if you put a little taper on your lances, after you lance and cut and form, the taper, as it wants to pull out, actually helps you get out. If these lines here were vertical instead of tapered, then when you wanted to pull out, it would actually bind. So those tapered lines actually act like a lead out for pulling the lance out. Again, if you needed straight edges on your lance, they can be done, but they're a little more expensive, they're a little more high maintenance. So what we're doing here is just giving you a, a little guideline on, on how to design the stamping uh, to be cost effective. Now we're going to talk about uh, 90 degree forming. Um, a lot of brackets uh, that are used require a 90 degree form. And this is the guideline for forming a 90 degree. Whenever you have uh, a 90 degree that you desire, you must always try to keep the length of the 90 degree a minimum of two and a half times the stock thickness plus radius. And again, using this stock thickness saying it was 100 thousandths thick and the inside radius being a hundred thousandths. So if the stock thickness is a hundred, you two and a half times thickness would be 250. And then if your radius was a hundred, it would be 350. So the H dimension would be 350 thousandths long. That makes it uh, uh, manufacturable to make a 90 degree. It does not require any overbending or any uh, sophisticated cam forming um, if you make that 90 degree shorter, say for example you wanted it to be somewhere in this area, it can be done, but again it's a little more tooling, a little more sophisticated tooling, a little more cost. Now something that happens that you must consider, especially with heavy gauge metal, whenever you uh, bend metal, uh, metal is a, a lot like plastic. It actually uh, compresses and, and, and it's actually palatable and it, it moves. And what I've got here is I, I've 
taken a, a, a photo of some fairly thick material, probably about 3 sixteenths of an inch thick. And here is the bend, okay, or what we call the compression point. You can see this is little radius right here kind of arcing. But one of the things that I want you to notice is this edge right here, it bulges out. It doesn't bulge out on this side, it bulges out on this side. So that metal bulges out regardless of the thickness of the material. Your material can be 10,000 thick or 100,000 thick, it bulges. However, you see it more with the heavier gauge material. With the thinner material, it's doing it, but it's so minor that you don't see it. So one of the things to consider is if you're designing a heavy gauge metal stamping, understand that there's going to be a bulge in this area. So if that's not desired, then what we can do is we can put a notch in this portion of the part so that when we form it, it bulges and it still stays below a desired surface that you may have. Now one of the other things to consider in the metal stamping process is the material itself. Um, unlike the machining process that I uh, described very early in the presentation where I showed you how a block is machined to generate a 90 degree bracket, I showed you how you remove material. Well, the metal stamping process, what we do is we buy coiled material or sheet material. And the challenge uh, for the metal stamper is that the coiled material uh, itself has some characteristics that are, uh, sometimes can be negative. Again, the illustration that you see in front of you is an exaggerated view, but sometimes the material will come in with a little flat or I mean, a little taper to it. Now, that taper is not visible to the eye, but it can be measured. So um, the difference between, for example, uh, let's say this edge right here, let's pick this and say this is a hundred thousandths vertical line. It may be 96 on this end. You're not going to see it with the eye, but if you measure it, it would be. So that's one of the challenges that we have as a metal stamper is we have to deal with the uh, geometry of the material as we buy it. This is called wedging or wedge. So this is one of the features that raw material can sometimes come with. If you look to your right here, it, this is called crown. It's kind of the opposite. The middle portion of it is actually higher than the two outsides. And that's also a common uh, characteristic sometimes of uh, material that is uh, bought in coil form. Again, remember what I what I said. This is all exaggerated for illustration purposes. You would probably not be able to see this with your eye. And then what you see here is dish. Dish is opposite of crown. It's almost like a little C version of the material. It's got a little crown to it. And so if you were to take this vertical line and measure it, it might be 100. But if you take this point and measure to this point, it might be a couple of thousands higher. You won't see that with your eye, but it's in the material. So these are some of the challenges that we face as metal stampers, that uh, characteristics that uh, are in the material before we even begin to form it. The other uh, uh, characteristic that, that we sometimes face is a coil set. Um, if you noticed in, in uh, the videos, you'll notice that the material was coming off of a coil, much like, uh, let's say, a spool of thread. It's being unwound. Well, because material, especially softer material, low carbon material, doesn't have memory or spring. It has set. So the smaller diameter is a different set than the larger diameter. So as you're eating up the material as you're manufacturing the part, the coil gets smaller. But so does the shape of the C, so to speak. That gets smaller too. So that's something that we have to overcome. Another challenge for us uh, as far as just material is camber. And camber is actually taking uh, the material and having the variation actually be in uh, perpendicular to this uh, variation. This is all vertical, while this is basically saying taking a flat piece of material and the longer the piece is, it becomes more and more of a C. So if you took this shape and lengthen it, you could see it would become a C or C shaped. Now again, this is exaggerated for illustration purposes, but if you get too much uh, camber, then it, it brings some challenges to the metal stamper. Um, the whole purpose of metal stamping is to find a cost-effective way to uh, generate a part that best meets your need. Uh, machining is always an option, but it's extremely expensive, and for high volume, it just doesn't make sense. 
uh, the metal stamping process can uh, very effectively make a part that uh, can be produced and manufactured a lot more cost effective. And the recommendation that we have is that you um, work with us, um, let us know what you expect of your part, what performance you're looking from your, for your part, and we can help you with the, uh, the stamping, uh, of actually making the stamping tool or possibly even uh, making some geometry changes to your part to make it uh, more effective, uh, uh, less costly, uh, longer lasting. So um, as I said, this is not intended to be a comprehensive uh, study in the metal stamping process, just an overview of what metal stamping is. And uh, should you have any questions, please feel free to uh, contact us at Connor.